What are the least reliable cars you can buy? In this video, I'm going to tell you. You see, CarWow has teamed up with WarrantyWise. They're the UK's leading provider of aftermarket warranties, and they have the data from thousands of breakdowns and car-related problems. They've analysed this data to work out which cars are the most and the least reliable. They recorded the age and mileage of each car, and they know how much they cost to fix and how long the repairs took. They discounted cars that had less than 100 warranty plans to ensure a fair sample size, and they excluded certain types of vehicles calls such as vans. We're only interested in cars here. All the models in Warranty Wise's data were less than 10 years old and none had any of their manufacturer's warranty left. After all, you'd only buy an aftermarket warranty once the manufacturer's warranty has run out. So Warranty Wise factored in all this information into a reliability index and that gives each car a score out of 100. The lower the score, the less reliable the car is simple. And now I'm going to reveal the cars that got the lowest scores. I'm Matt Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Hopefully your car isn't in this list. Tenth place on this list goes to the previous generation Range Rover Sport. Warranty Wise gave it a reliability score of 34.6 out of 100 thanks to some fairly common suspension issues. On average, Warranty Wise paid £2,280 to fix these Range Rover Sports, but that's nothing compared to what one repair cost. One car had a much more serious engine fault that ended up costing <laughs> £30,252 to put right. <laughs> I bet the owner was glad they had an aftermarket warranty when they got that bill. Shouldn't be laughing, really. Taking joint ninth place is a Seat Leon Cupra and Audi A7, which both scored 33.4 out of 100. To be specific, I'm talking about cars registered between 2014 and early 2022. The most common issue with the A7 was to do with the emission control system, while the Seat Leon Cupra suffered with cooling issues. The average repair cost for these cars were £1,020 for the Seat, and unsurprisingly, slightly more for the Audi, £2,367 for the A7. But the most expensive faults were much more expensive. One Seat Leon Cupra had an engine fault that cost £3,984 to fix. Still, that's about tenth of the price of that previous Range Rover Sport engine fault. But one unlucky A7 owner had a serious engine fault that cost warranty-wise £31,946 to put right. Those numbers are massively different. So how come these cars have the same reliability score? Well, warranty-wise found that there was more chance of a Leon Cupra going wrong than the A7. And these cars tended to have covered fewer miles before needing repairs than the Audi A7s. But when you factor all this into Warranty Wise's algorithm, along with the repair costs, you get exactly the same score for both cars. The eighth least reliable car on Warranty Wise's list is another Audi. It's the previous generation RS3. Now, Warranty Wise has paid out £3,039 on average to fix broken RS3s. And the most common issues were gearbox faults. But that's not all. The gearbox in one car was so buggered that it cost £9,500 to put right. Warranty Wise factored all this into its reliability index and gave the Audi RS3 a score of 32.1 out of 100. Now I wonder, in the past, whenever I've launched Audi RS3s, they were really brutal off the line. However, with the later generation models and the very most recent cars, the launch is much more progressive. I wonder if Audi were aware that the launches were hurting their gearboxes. I don't know, I've just totally made that up, but it sort of makes sense to me. In seventh place, is yet another Audi. <laughs> it's the Audi RS6, specifically the C7 and early C8 models. Audi isn't having a really great show so far, is it? I ran a C8 RS6 for about six months back in 2021, and I had no problems with it whatsoever. Well, besides a puncture. And I've just collected a brand new RS7 too, so hopefully that proves to be just as reliable. I've got loads of great content planned for this car, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and you'll be notified when I upload some videos on that particular car. Anyway, back to the RS6. Warranty Wise found that the most common issues with the older RS6s were electrical problems. The average repair bill for these cars came to £2,079. Ironically, the most expensive breakage on one of these cars was to do with the brakes, and it cost a total of £18,581 to fix. Wait a minute, let's just stop there. That's a lot for fixing the brakes. They must have been the common ceramics. This meant that the Audi RS6 scored 30.3 out of 100 in Warranty Wise's survey. 
Next up in sixth place is the Tesla Model S. I bet you were all waiting for a Tesla on this list, right? What might not surprise you is that these cars tend to suffer from electrical issues. On average, the Model S cost £1,281 to put right. But one major battery problem on a Tesla Model S actually ended up costing warranty-wise £10,205 to fix. Now, Tesla actually offers a really impressive eight-year, 150,000-mile warranty on battery and drive units in the new Model S. So this particular car must have been a bit older. But when you factor this into the overall reliability score, warranty-wise awarded the Tesla Model S just 25.9 points out of a possible 100. That means it's the least reliable big saloon car on this list. But it isn't the least reliable electric car you can buy. I'll tell you about that car in a bit. Here we go then, finally, in at number five, we have an Italian car living up to the stereotype. They don't have the best reputation for reliability, and it looks like the Maserati Levante is no different. Warranty-wise, gave it a score of 25.3 out of 100, putting it in fifth place. Weirdly, there wasn't one single common issue affecting these cars, just lots and lots of different ones. And they were pretty expensive to fix too, because the average repair cost recorded by Warranty-wise for that Maserati was £2,974. But the most expensive repair cost more than nine times that amount. One unlucky owner, or should I say lucky, because they actually took out an aftermarket warranty, had engine problems for their car, which came to a total bill of £27,853. Ouch. In at number four, another Tesla. According to Warranty Wise, this is the least reliable electric car on this list. It's the Model X. Can you guess what the most common issues were? Not electrical faults this time, and not those really, really complex Falcon wing doors. The most common problem was actually with the car suspension, and the average repair cost on a Tesla Model X came to £1,181. But one suspension issue was so severe that it cost Warranty Wise £4,704 to fix. So how come Warranty Wise ranked this Tesla as less less reliable than the Maserati Levante, even though the repair costs were less. Well, it turns out there was just more chance of a Tesla going wrong. So more chance of a Tesla going wrong than a Maserati, makes you think. Anyway, this contributed to the Tesla Model X only scoring 24.6 out of a possible 100 points for reliability, according to Warranty Wise. Now we come to the three least reliable cars, according to Warranty Wise. And in at number three, we have the BMW M3. Now, I love my old G80 BMW M3, and thankfully, I had no issues with it whatsoever, but I might have been lucky, because if I had an older F80 model, things could have been different. Warranty-wise, gave that particular car a rather disappointing 24 out of 100 in its reliability index. That means that the M3 is the least reliable small saloon car too. Common issues related to the twin turbos you get on the M3's S55 engine, and this contributed to an average repair bill of £2,451. The gearbox didn't prove all that reliable either. Warranty-wise, had to pay a stonking £12,115 for a transmission failure in one particular M3. Now, if you want to see how every generation of BMW M3 compares in terms of their performance when racing over the quarter mile, click on the pop-out banner appearing in the top right-hand corner of the screen, or scan the QR code on screen now with your phone. The second least reliable car, according to Warranty Wise's reliability index, is the Land Rover Discovery and the Range Rover. I'm specifically talking about the Discovery 4 and 5 and the previous generation Range Rover. These cars scored 22.1 in the reliability index. This makes the Discovery the least reliable seven-seater on this list. And both it and the Range Rover take the top spot as the least reliable large SUVs according to warranty-wise. Both cars suffered from common electrical faults and both had similar average repair costs. The Discovery cost on average £2,041 to put right, and the Range Rover chalked up an average repair bill of £1,834. There's little to choose between them when you look at the most expensive repairs too. Warranty Wise forked out a whopping £25,695 to fix the engine in one Discovery, and one engine fault in a Range Rover cost a staggering £26,062 to fix. I recently bought an old Range Rover for less than a tenth of what that repair actually cost. Now, before I tell you which car is the least reliable overall, according to Warranty Wise's reliability index, I want to show you the least reliable cars in categories that haven't appeared in Warranty Wise's top 10. I've already included large SUVs, saloon cars, hot hatches and electric cars. But what about all the other kinds of cars out there? The least reliable city car, according to Warranty Wise, is the second generation of smart 
144. This scored 60.9 out of a possible 100 points, which is actually pretty reliable, but it's still lower than any other city car on WarrantyWise's list. And according to WarrantyWise, they paid out £949 on average to fix problems with these smart 44s, which were often to do with the electrical system. But one car, had a knackered clutch, and that ended up costing £5,817 to put right. Next up is the least reliable hatchback or small estate, and the award goes to the second generation Mini Clubman. Overall, this car didn't score too badly, according to Warranty Wise. It chalked up 57.8 points out of a possible 100. The most common problems were electrical faults, and the average repair cost came to £1,506. But one Mini Clubman had a very serious gearbox issue that ended up costing £8,768 to put right. Moving on to pickup trucks, and according to Warranty Wise, the least reliable one is the first generation Volkswagen Amarok. It scored 41.5 points out of 100. The most common faults with these trucks are to do with the emissions. Wait a minute, a Volkswagen with emission issues? Anyway, on average, Amarok faults cost £1,547 to put right, which isn't too steep. And the most expensive fault didn't break the bank either. Warranty Wise paid out £5,223 to fix a problem with one car's fuel system. Now, I've already told you about the least reliable large SUVs and seven seaters you can buy, but what about smaller five seater SUVs and crossovers? Well, the least reliable smaller SUV, according to Warranty Wise data, is the first and second generation Audi SQ5. The ones made between 2014 and 2021. The most common faults with these cars were to do with the fuel system, and the average repair cost when this SUV broke down came to £2,047. However, one SQ5 had a knackered turbo that ended up costing £10,678 to fix. As a result, the SQ5 scored 40.9 out of a possible 100 points in the Warranty Wise Reliability Index. If you're a politician or a celebrity, you want to be chauffeured around in a reliable limo. Well, you might want to avoid older versions of the BMW 7 Series, specifically the 5th and 6th generation cars made since 2014. These scored 39 out of 100 possible reliability points. And according to Warranty Wise, this means they're less reliable than other luxury saloon cars like the Mercedes S-Class and Audi A8 or the Jaguar XJ. When a BMW 7 Series went wrong, Warranty Wise ended up paying an average of £1,965 to fix it. And most of these repairs were a result of suspension issues. But the most expensive fault was much pricier. One car had a serious gearbox problem that cost Warranty Wise £11,826 to put right. If you're thinking about buying a cheap limo, you can see what happened when I bought an old BMW 7 Series, an old S-Class, and an old Lexus. Click on the pop-out banner up there or follow the QR code using your phone to watch that video. Now then, let's get back to the overall list. And drum roll please, while I announce what according to Warranty Wise is the least reliable used car. It's another BMW, and it's the i8. It only scored 16.5 out of 100 for reliability. This also means it's the least reliable sports car on the list, as well as being the least reliable car overall. And you won't be surprised to hear that most of the common issues were to do with the car's hybrid electrical system. The average amount that Warranty Wise paid to fix these issues was £2,006. But it turns out the i8's internal combustion engine isn't immune from problems either. The most expensive claim that Warranty Wise paid to fix was to do with the fuel system system on an i8, and this came to a hefty £7,530. Now you might be wondering why the BMW i8 has actually topped, or should that be bottomed, this list, when actually the repair bills aren't as big as some other cars on this list. Well that's because of the frequency or likelihood of an i8 going wrong. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, it really helps us out. If you click on the video windows, you can watch some more videos, and if you click on the CarWow logo, you can go to CarWow to see how much money you can save on your next car. Thanks for watching.